Our guest, of course, is international best-selling author and speaker, John Bevere. And we're talking about his book, The Bait of Satan, Living Free from the Deadly Trap of Offense. Now, John, were you ever under attack while writing this book? Because I know we can be offended by everything. There's so much out there the enemy is trying to get us with. Oh, yeah. If God gives you a revelation of something, believe me, you're going to get attacked in that area. And I've had uh, several opportunities since writing the book to, uh, my wife has looked at me and said, I've got a great book for you right now. <laughs> and so, yes, it is something, you know, Jesus said, he said, it's impossible that offenses will not come. Yeah, right. Basically what he's saying is if you breathe air, you drink water, you're going to have the opportunity to get offended. But what you do with the offense determines your future. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to become stronger or you're going to become bitter, but you'll mm -hmm. never be the same. Mm -hmm. And you said too that the, the closer the people are to you, the greater the offense. I find that interesting. It's like the people in your home, your parents, your, your wife, your husband are the ones that offend you the most. Right. And the reason is, is because our expectations are higher on them. Mm -hmm. We set ourselves up for an offense by our expectations. David said it like this. He wasn't an enemy that reproached me. I expected that. I could have handled that. But it was you, my brother, my equal, my companion. We went into the house of God. We heard the word of God together. You're the one that's lifted your heel against me. Mm -hmm. So this is why many times um, Christians that are offended mm -hmm. will look at me. Have you ever heard a Christian say this? Well, you know, the world treats me better than most Christians. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, you want to know why? Mm -hmm. Let's say this is ground zero. Our expectations on the world is we don't have none. We expect the world to be our enemies hurt us, right? So our, our expectations are zero. But let's say on the average Christian, our expectations here. On our husband and wife, it's here. On our pastor, it's way up there. Mm -hmm. So if a Christian only does that much for us, they've offended me by that much because my expectation on them was here. That's why they say the world treats me better because their, ex their expectations are zero. So you set okay. yourself up for an offense by your expectations. Should we have expectations then? Like this is the thing in your book which kind of shocked me. It's like we have issues about rights. It's like you have no rights and you pretty much shouldn't have expectations on people. And that kind of <clears> is like what? I think I have some legitimate expectations <laughs> yeah. and rights for people. And you're saying, you kind of rocked me a little bit on that one, John. All look. right, I'll, I'll give you an example <laughs> okay. because I was the same way. There was a person in my life that should have been sharing love with me and they kept slapping me in the face for nine months. Finally, I had it. And so I went to the gym and it was kind of cool. Nobody was in the gym. It was in a gym in my apartment complex. And um, I um, started lifting weights and I said, God, you're gonna have to talk to me and talk to me right now because I am so upset because I keep getting slapped in the face by this person that should love me. And the Lord said, you need to develop faith in the love of God. I said, what? And I, I heard that. And I said, I don't understand. He said, John, he said, I said, if you sow to the flesh, you'll of the flesh reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you'll reap harvest life everlasting. Mm -hmm. He said, look at me. He said, I had 12 men that were very close to me. I paid their bills for three and a half years. I taught them for three and a half years. I took care of them. I healed. I healed. Then in my hour of greatest need, my personal hour of greatest need, one of them betrayed me, one of them denied me, and nine of the others fled and ran for their lives in my hour of greatest need. He said, so right then I could have called for two le six legions of angels and said, get me out of here, Father. I've had it with these guys. Yeah. He said, but I chose to love them because he had no expectations on them. And he said, oh. I knew that if I lay down my life, the love of God, I knew that I would reap a harvest because it's a spiritual law. Mm -hmm. If we sow to the spirit, we're going to reap. Now, he said, your mm -hmm. problem is you're expecting the harvest to come back from that one individual. Yeah. He said, the harvest may come from all of it. But if you keep sowing to the spirit, you're going to reap a harvest. He said, what was my harvest? Now I have many sons and daughters who love me with the love that I love them. Are you following me? Yes. yes. His harvest. Yes. King David is one of the wonderful biblical examples. I mean, a decade running after Saul's spear, and it always moves me to read David genuinely grieving yeah. when Saul died. I absolutely I mean, love wouldn't that. you humanly say, yes, yes, Lord, what did you take so long yeah. for? I've been, yeah. you know, you promised me the throne, and this has been a, a terrible ordeal. No, he, he, he defended Saul's position yes. as king, and he genuinely wept for him and preserved his heart after God 
Yeah. No, was in a position and taught to all lead. the men yeah. of Judah a love song to Saul. No, I was going to say as a note for the people who might be watching who don't know the story of David, you can find it in First and Second Samuel mm -hmm. in the Bible. Yep. I just wanted to make yep. thank you, yep. Richard. Yeah, that's for that. But it's Second, it's Second Samuel. First, you have to read First Samuel, and that's Second Samuel chapter one, where he teaches everybody a love song. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me is amazing, and he is a type of Christ, you know. And and then you look at Paul; <laughs> he's being stoned, beaten, you know, persecuted by the Jews. The Gentiles are treating him great. Mm -hmm. But then he writes in Romans 9, says, I wish I could be accursed for Christ from ever if I could get my brethren, my kinsmen, my Jewish brothers and sisters saved. Mm -hmm. You're, and I'm just sitting here going, scratching my head going, okay, I don't know, I, I can't comprehend that yet. Mm -hmm. But the thing but she, is, oh, I was gonna say just quickly, the thing is though, it takes work. Like your book, I'm reading it, and it's like, there's work. I have to choose that I'm not going to have these expectations. I have to work through, with God's help, forgiveness and working reconciliation. Like, I think for me, John, it was <clears throat> like, it doesn't just come. Yeah. Like, it doesn't just happen because you just let things happen. There is actually a sense where you have to say, okay, God, help me, and help me choose and forgive. Like, there's work involved in all of this. Well, the guy that really offended me... Um, I, I just couldn't get over it. I couldn't forgive him. And uh, finally, God opened up a scripture to me. Acts 24, 16, Paul said, and herein do I exercise myself. You just said work, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exer listen to the word exercise myself to always have a conscience free from offense with God and men. Mm -hmm. So the word exercise really riveted me. I thought, okay, God, he said, you're wounded. This man has wounded you. Now wounds, if you don't properly treat wounds, they don't, they don't, they don't ever heal. And they don't heal overnight, right? Yeah. So if they get infected, you could. Oh, be you're in big trouble. trouble. So God said, "You need to exercise. You've been wounded." I said, "How do I exercise?" And He showed me Matthew five forty four, where Jesus said, "Pray for those who abuse you." Now, isn't it interesting? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, "Pray for your mom," "Pray for your dad." Find find one place in Scripture where He says, "Pray for your mom and dad." You won't find it in the Gospels. Now, the, does that mean I don't pray for my mom and dad? A million times, no. You should pray for your parents. But what I find interesting is the person that Jesus did say that we're to pray mm -hmm. for is the one who's abu mistreated you, abused you, harmed you. Right? Mm -hmm. So the Lord said to me, He said, "Pray for him." So I got it from the table. I said, "God, in Jesus' name, bless him." <laughs> what times have I've we done, done that? that? I know. Oh, I was about to say, oh my shoot. Yeah. The next day. Oh, by the way, bless him. The next day. If you can, bless him, right? <laughs> so that's the way I, I pray for um, uh, five weeks. Now that's like lifting a penny. You know when guys, you know guys when they get wounded, like playing soccer or football, what do they go through? Physical therapy, which yes. is focused exercise mm -hmm. to get their knee back to where it was before it was wounded. Right. That's what we do. Herein do I exercise myself, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I'll never forget one time I injured my knee and this guy said to me, he said, you want to know why you injured your knee? I said, why? He said, you're out of shape. You don't exercise. Mm 